Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Rajat and today we will be discussing the question Combination Sum Part 4. In this question, we are given an array of distinct integer nums and a target integer target. We need to return the number of possible combination that add up to the target. The answer is guaranteed to fit in a 32-bit integer. Now, in the first example, we see that we are given 3 integers and the target is 4 and there are total possible 7 combinations that we can return from this particular given input. So we return output as 7 and similarly in the example 2. Now the given constraint with the problem states that all the elements of nums are unique and there is a follow up problem also given with this but we'll discuss that at the end of this video. Now in the first example as we can see we can use the number any number of times so there is no limit to that and also if you see the order if changed will be counted as a different combination. So this question is not based on combination it is basically a permutation of the given numbers. Now let's try to first understand this particular problem with the help of an example. So we are given three numbers and the target is given to us as four. So if we depict those three numbers 1, 2, 3 and the target is now 4 and if we select one of the numbers in this array, suppose we select number 1 first. If we have fixed one position of this number, the target now comes down to 3 and as we can use all the numbers as many times as we want, there are three numbers still remains the same and now we again choose one of the number this time again we choose one and the target goes down to two and we continue to do so till the target is zero now when the target is zero we know that we have achieved the target initially given to us so there is no forward from this point so we backtrack now when we backtrack from this point at the third last level we can take two also and that makes the target as zero. So that is one more combination that we can have. And once we go above this level, we can see much more combinations. So if you see at each level, we had the choice of using any of the three numbers at each given level for all the numbers that are smaller than the target, we can continuously call the same function with the updated target and then get the total number of combinations. As you can see when the target is equal to 0, there is only one combination existing. So that becomes our base condition. So if the target is given to us as 0, we will return 1. Now let's try to code this particular approach. So as discussed, we see that the base condition is if the target is equal to 0, then we need to simply return 1 because there is only one combination which gives us the target as 0. Now we discuss that for each of the value present in this nums array, if the value is less than or equals to the target value, only then we can call the function. So we'll recursively call the same function passing the array and then the updated target. The updated target will be target minus the value i. Whatever result this combination is returning, we need to store that somewhere. So we will take a result variable which will initially be 0. We will add the result into this whatever result that we are getting from this combination sum. And then at the end, we need to return the result. So this completes the coding part wherein for each of the target present, we are calculating the value again and again. Let's try to run this code. So it ran successfully. Let's submit this. So it gave a time limit exceeded error. So let's see why we are getting a time limit exceeded. So we had this structure from the previous example and once we turn our attention to some of the values we see that we are not storing the values at any given step and thereby we need to recalculate the same values again and again which increases the time complexity and thereby gives us a time limit exceeded. So if the target is 1 and the array is same the answer will still remain the same no matter from where point of time we are calculating it. So if we have stored the value in some array that when the target is 1 and the array is this, we could have used the same value again. So now let's change our existing code and use memoization to store the values of the intermediate results. So we would need an array wherein we can store the value. We will call that as dp. Now we will initialize this dp array with target plus 1 
value at each index of the dp array corresponds to the number of combination which gives the sum equals to the target that's why we have took the size of the dp array as target plus 1 because the maximum sum that we need is equals to the target we will fill this dp array with minus 1 this is because if we fill it 0 then there can be a scenario wherein some targets do not have any value so a zero will signify that there is no combination present for those sum and minus one signifies that we haven't calculated the sum till yet for that particular target so we had this target zero so we will put this value into the dp initially so now we will move this particular code into a helper function so now we need to check if we already had that value in the dp array so if the value against this target is greater than minus 1 then without calculating we can just directly return this value and if not we will calculate that value and against this target we will put the result and return the target. Now from here we will just call the helper method the recursive call will be of helper method and at the end the result will be in dp of target. So uh, arrays.fill this should be dp. Now let's try to run this code. So it ran successfully, let's submit this. So it got submitted successfully. The time complexity in this case is target into nums.length. Well, the space complexity is of target in order to maintain the recursive stack. And also as we have used a DP array to store the intermediate results. Now, this is a top-down approach wherein we start with a target initially given to us and then try to bring it down to zero. So as we can see, it forms a tree-like structure we can solve this problem with bottom up approach also wherein we start with target as one trying to find that value and then move up to the target initially given to us. So let's try to do that as well. We'll still need this dp array. We won't fill it with minus one as now as we are going from bottom to the up we know that we have calculated the, all the previous values. We'll still put the initial value dp in this and now we won't need this helper now we need to find the value for each of the target starting with one till the target now for each of this target we need to iterate over this nums array so we'll iterate over that now only if for the target that we are trying to find is greater than or equals to the value that we are finding it for we try to add the value at that particular position so at this target we will add the value so this completes the coding part we can remove this method we do not need this and now let's try to run this code so it ran successfully let's submit this so it also got submitted successfully the time complexity still remains n into the target while the space complexity is still target now comes the part wherein we see what was the follow-up problem so the follow-up problem states that what if negative numbers are allowed in the given array how does it change the problem and what limitations we need to add to the quotient to allow negative numbers. Now, there is a problem when we try to introduce negative numbers in this particular given array. When we introduce a negative number, there are chances that the output will go infinite. So let me give you an example about that also. Suppose we have a input array wherein the values given to us are 1 and minus 1. And the target is 1. In this case, the combination can be 1, 1 minus 1, 1. As minus 1 and 1 forms a 0, we can have infinite pair of that. And at the end, we can have a 1, which gives us the sum still as 1. So that means the output will go infinite and it won't be possible for us to calculate the result. So that is what the effect of negative number when introduced in this particular question. In order to mitigate the infinite results, we need to have a limitations number of times any number in the nums array can be used in the result. If we have that limitations only then we will be sure that there exists a finite number of result or we can say combinations. So that answers up the follow up problem. This is the fourth part of combination sum. So I highly recommend you to do the previous three parts also. That would be a great practice for you guys. Do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.